Hi there, it's Ken here again from Ken's Christmas Village. Um, as I said to some of you, I'm planning to do some more sculpting this year, polystyrene sculpting. And in my village, I've got a couple of areas, one higher area where part of the village is and a lower area where I'm gonna expand my fairground this year. Now in previous years, the kind of drop between the two at the back, because they step out, I used white fleece which just hung down as a backdrop between the two areas, the two heights. What I thought I'd do this year was make it look like a rock face, put a rock face behind. Now I know you can um, do this in many different ways, but because I've already used polystyrene to create some bases for some of my buildings, I thought I would also try and use polystyrene for my backdrop. So what I did was I went online and purchased some sheets of polystyrene. You can buy it in different thicknesses from Amazon. What I've got here is five mil and 25 mil. Uh, I thought I would use five mil because it will um, not take up much space. What I am concerned about is the fact that it's very flexible and flimsy and could break quite easily. So I could spend a lot of time creating these only to find that they break very easily. So I think I might end up uh, using the thicker boards, but, but what I've done so far is create some test panels <clears throat> to look at the different textures that I could use. Now, what I did last year when I was creating my sculptures, I used a, um, a hot wire. Uh, previously I'd used a battery operated hot wire, but what I did last year was purchase a mains operated one because at the end of the day, the battery ones are a little bit flaky. Um, you get through a lot of batteries and they're not very powerful. This hot wire one, uh, this electric mains electric one is, is brilliant. You get with it three attachments. You get just a uh, kind of a stick, which you can carve with and cut with. And you may have seen last year, I used it to cut out some steps and create some steps. You get this hook, which is what I used on my tests. And you'll see, uh, I think this is quite a useful tool because you can use it in different ways. You also get a classic hot wire, which is great for cutting uh, straight through things. But it's very difficult to sculpt with this. It's quite nice for taking off slivers. And I have used slivers of polystyrene to stick to a surface uh, to create uh, an outcrop. I've done that in the past when I created my ski slope. Um, but I'm not going to use that this time. Uh, you also get a little base so that when you're working with it, you can kind of rest it down and just keep it safe. It, I think it cost me about, I don't know, 15 quid on Amazon. I have to say worth every penny. Uh, far better to get one of these if you're going to do sculpting uh, than use a battery operated one. So anyway, what I decided to do was do some test areas on a piece of this polystyrene. And then last year I used um, two techniques. I used plaster bandage, which many of you will have seen before. This you soak in water and you put it um, smooth side down. When you buy this, there's a rough side and a smooth side. The rough side's got the most plaster on it. You put this down on your surface, you kind of spread the plaster around and you let it dry. It comes in rolls like this. You buy it from places like Hobbycraft or you can buy it online. What I found when I used it was that sometimes afterwards uh, you could see some of the texture of the bandage. So I mixed up some plaster, which you can get in bags like this from again, Hobbycraft or, or any sort of hobby center. Um, so I mixed up some, some plaster and painted that over the top. The downside of working with plaster, if, you're not, if you don't get the mix right, is it dries really quickly. Um, so within a few minutes, uh, whatever you've mixed has, has turned solid. That's okay if you're quick, um, but it can be a bit time machine and keep mixing it up. I'm gonna carry on and try that again. But what I also thought I would try, I had some building work done in my house and the builders, very kindly, I'm gonna get up to get this, left this in my shed, which is fillers that plaster, uh, plasterers use and builders use for filling cracks. Now I've got this great big uh, five kilo bag of this um, and inside the five kilo bag, there are five smaller bags of this uh, filler. So I thought, let's give that a whirl, see if I can use that and 
and I will check and see if it's cheaper because it may be a lot cheaper than buying plaster of Paris, which because it's white, pure white, is probably more expensive to manufacture. Uh, anyway, um, I thought I'd give that a whirl because I've got lots of it. What I've done is take one of these sheets, I've taken one of these sheets and I've split it into three sections. And I've used this gun to create different textures. I'll hold this closer to the camera in a moment to explain to you uh, what I've done. I've then covered these and you will see, you can see here with the different colors, I've used the uh, Glypop filler, so the builder's filler here, this one that looks brown, slightly brown, is the professional builder's filler. And this is in the center, the whiter ones and down there in the corner is plaster of Paris. That's the, the standard one that you buy from a, a, a craft shop. So I've tried these different textures and what I've done is used this. Now what I did over here, I'm gonna stand up and just come closer here. What I did over here was turn this at an angle and use it either square to create the lines or I turned it like that to scoop in to create a, dip, dip, a big scoop, deep scoop. What I'm trying to do is create um, a look like strata. You know you see it sometimes see strata in rocks, layers of, of rock. And I will then paint it to get a different effect. So there, over there I did fine lines and deep scoops. Here I did just fine lines. And here, what I did was I turned this slightly at an angle. So when I got an in-betweeny. I got an in-between a deep scoop, which you would do if you went like that. A fine line, which would do if you went like that. I got an in-between you by just turning at an angle. And I quite like that. I just went with straight lines there. Okay. I went with diagonal lines and scoops there. And then what I've done, as you can see, I've joined some of these up. And I quite like that effect. Okay, so I'm just letting this dry and then I will then start painting it. And I will paint it using um, uh, a model paint, UBDC, uh, I can't remember the name of the paints, but when I do the painting video, I'll show you the paints that I'm gonna use. They're the same ones that I used last year for my ski slope and my ballroom base. I'm gonna paint these. I think I will go for this style because I like it. But what you'll also see is when I use this filler, I mix it up quite thick and you can see this has also given me some texture. Can you see some little knobbly bits um, on the top, which will also give me more texture to my rock face. Okay, so that's part one of this. I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna do some painting. And this is just a test sheet um, to make help me to decide before I start carving these big ones. What I need is three of these alongside each other to fill up uh, uh, the back space between my two areas behind my fairground. So I know you like seeing these things as they go along. Sometimes I've done things where I've finished it, I've, I've got a result I'm happy with, I finish it and then I do a video of it. What I would do, thought I would do this time is do these tests on video so you can see the pitfalls that happen as, as you go along. Some bits I will like, some I won't like, um, and that's how we all go about it. We try things, we see what we like, and then we share it with other people. So, um, thanks for watching this. There'll be a part two. When this is dried, I'll start painting it, and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing, so you can try it yourself, and you'll see the results that are good, that are bad, the pitfalls. You can decide how and what to do on any sculpting that you may want to do. Okay, so anyway, happy uh, villaging and I'll chat to you again soon. Bye for now.